My name is Hjertil Jekyll. I'm um, the founder and head brewer of Nögne Ö, um, Norwegian craft brewery. Nögne is located in uh, Grimstad, Norway, a uh, small coastal town, a uh, population of 20,000. I was working with uh, Scandinavian Airlines as, a, as an airline pilot and uh, by coming to the US I got in touch with uh, or I got exposed to all these great beers and uh, I also uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to get ingredients to start brewing them. It was kind of weird to, um, to be a home brewer in Norway uh, and operating in my, own, in my own way or have influence which didn't influence other people because most of the Norwegian home brewers were very British um, slash German focused while I had my uh, inspiration from the US and it was kind of frustrating to um, see that my uh, best IPA ever didn't fly at the homebrew competition uh, where uh, the comment from the judges was that it was uh, too hoppy and out of balance. So uh, when, you're, when nobody understands you and you see that n none of the beers you like are on the market, then you need to have to take care of it yourself, right? So um, we just had to start a brewery. It is uh, a nögne ö. But the whole name is actually Nögne Ö, the Kompromisslöse Bryggeri, which means uh, Naked Island, the uncompromising brewery. Naked Island is a poetic term from uh, a poem by Hed Henrik Ibsen, and the naked part is then uh, this island which has no vegetation. We were the, the first craft brewery to start in Norway. We don't like, usually like bragging, but I would like to say that we were the driving force in getting uh, uh, craft beer culture um, on the road in, in Norway. Nögne Ögel started in 2002, a very, um, what can I say, slow and laborious start. We had no money, we uh, started with scrap metal and dairy tanks and uh, just had to make do with what we could find. But we just had this uh, desire to, uh, to make good beer. We didn't have a business plan, we didn't know what we were doing, but we just wanted to, to get started uh, bringing good beers to the Norwegian public. So yes, we started in 2002, had the beers available on the market in 2003, and uh, at that time we realized what a really stupid thing we had done, because there were absolutely no market for our beers, which we were very proud of, but which nobody understood. If you look at Norwegian preferences with regards to what people are drinking, and if you look at what people have been exposed to, then one would assume that uh, easy, or session, session ale session beers uh, with a low flavor impact would, put, would probably be the ones which would be more popular. But it's funny that our IPA is the most popular beer in Norway. It's selling way better than any of our other beer styles. We typically would only have one beer of each style. We would have one pale ale, we would have one porter and so on. But of IPAs we actually have up to this point made nine different and I think five of them are currently out there. So uh, yeah, IPAs, it's like we, we never get enough. Our Sunturn brew is smoked barley wine. We brew it once a year. We brew it on the shortest day of the year, which is the 21st uh, uh, of December. It's an assertive barley wine and um, it started, I started making it because I was, I, I typically get very depressed during winter. I think winters are dark and uh, Dark, boring, depressing, and uh, cold. I had this idea that we ne I need to make an extreme beer to uh, just lift lift my spirits, <laughs> and uh, and that's how Sunton Brew was was born. That was probably four years ago. The Horizon series is, um, I guess, it's an interesting series of beer, but it's a pain in the neck for us really to to brew. It takes a long time, and uh, the fermentations are always long. It's hard to predict uh, a, long, uh, a long, long fermentation cycle to, to high, uh, high alcohol levels. It started off with Dark Horizon first edition. The um, inspiration for it was Avery Mephistopheles. So it's a, it's a big uh, imperial stout. I typically would say that it's an imperial stout on steroids. And we've made it three times. They're all very different. We never, we never um, make one recipe again. So when one edition is released, then it'll never come back. Uh, we've also made a, a Sweet Horizon, which was a really cool beer, I think. It was, was overly sweet, and, uh, and uh, we've received lots of great feedback on that. And then we have the Red Horizon, which is a series of beers fermented with sake yeast. 
uh, in different ways and with different yeasts, and that'll continue. Nugnu is a passion-driven brewery. We don't make what we think people like, we make what we like. And when we realized how great sake is with regards to, oh, first of all, maybe the process of making it, because it's so complicated and it's so technique-driven instead of being ingredient-driven, which is typically uh, what you do with, with beer, but also all these wonderful flavors, all these great complex flavors you would find in a sake. And after all, it's only made with rice, water, yeast, and this little enzyme. So we're passion driven and we thought, hey, let's, let's make sake, which was really, really, really stupid. We knew it was stupid, we just didn't understand how stupid it was until we were out there with products, which of course, again, nobody wanted. So again, we came out there with products we were very proud of. And uh, managers of Japanese restaurants would say, this is not sake. People here don't like this. Why? Well, because we had to make sake our own way. We make Yamaha sake, old-fashioned way of yeast starter technique where the yeast starter gets infected by lactobacillus, naturally airborne. And uh, by going our own ways, then of course, again, you need to educate people because they don't, nece they don't necessarily understand you right away. So we're two and a half uh, years down the road there with sake, and we have, still have a long way to go, but we do not have a tradition for giving in, so we're just doing what we love. Keeping in touch with homebrewers is important to us, and, uh, and yes, we've had some uh, interesting um, projects and competitions, uh, both in New York and in Philadelphia. Also, we have a homebrew day at our brewery once a year, which is really interesting. And last year, we actually had to stop uh, the people signing up after 11 minutes because we were up to the limit. We stopped it a bit late, we max maximum was 60 participants and we ended up with 80. We all go and, and brew together. We have some uh, people coming in and uh, so there, there will be guest speakers talking about brewing related subjects. We will sell homebrew uh, supplies. Everybody who are participating will then have ordered through us a yeast strain which they will ferment this beer with and everybody brings a bucket with 25 liters of word home after the day where we brew this together with our own yeast strain. Two months later we meet up and have a great party and there's an award for the best best beer and for the most creative beer who has fermented this in the most creative way. It's a great event and we'd like that to go on and uh, in the future when we move to a larger location, more when we have more space, then we'd like it to be more people who can come in and do that together with us. One thing we are very focused on right now is to grow on this wave, because we see it as a wave right now. Maybe it is a wave uh, for all breweries, it probably is, but for us we find it very satisfying to see that we're growing uh, at a very high pace in Norway. In 2010 we grew by 50%, in 2011 we grew by almost 100%. And uh, in this year, 2012, it looks like we're going to be end up at 40. We're at 10,000 hectoliters this year. This, um, so, so we're not large at all. But people ask, how, how large can we be? And I say, there are no limits to how large we can be as long as we will be, continue to be a passion-driven brewery. P passion for what we're doing, uh, still the focus on that we brew what we like, in Nogno, it's the brewers who decide how the beer should be, not any manager or consultant. Or it's, 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 all, it's all done by the brewers. And we think that as long as we do that, as long as we meet people and uh, answer their, if they write to us, if they call us, if they visit us, that we take time to listen to them and we take time to tell our story and, and convey what we believe in, if we take time to communicate with home brewers, if we take time to uh, sell uh, grains or hops or give away yeast. I mean, come on, ye all breweries have too much yeast. It's just to take the time to open the valve and get some out for the home brewer who wants some. If we do that, then we think that there are no limits to how, how big we can be. At the same time, we're very, very, very conscious about how we are perceived and how we communicate with people. We spend so much time on, on, on debating these things. We even have a document, internal document, which we use, which defines our values and, who, and how, we, how we wish to be perceived.
I think it's interesting. I, mean, I think we have four defined values, which is kind of, uh, of interesting. Maybe they're not, but then you can just edit them out. <laughs> We at Nugno, we have, uh, we have what I would say we have four core values. One is, of course, quality. Uh, you can, we, when you're small, you cannot compete on price, so we have to compete on something else. So quality is extremely important to us. We do have a wide variety of, uh, of grains and hops. Uh, I guess that's uh, what all craft brewers have, but I think we, we go uh, a bit further in, in, um, in our variety of, of things to create, to give us all the ingredients to make unique um, product, which is for us consistent with, with quality. Number two would be diversity. When we started, we started because there were no other beers available in Norway than light lagers. So for us, uh, having a large portfolio of beers is, is actually um, important. That's, that's what made us start brewing. And if we stop having lots of different beers, then we would like, you know, not be loyal to what made us start. It's really a nightmare now when we've grown and we have all, always 25-ish uh, different beers in stock. Uh, it is very demanding, but still it's, it's crucial for who we are. Number three would be the integrity of the beer style. When you drink one of our beers, we think it should be easy to, 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 to recognize that, hey, this is a porter or this is a pale ale. Some breweries are, at least in Europe, are very uh, shy of uh, going all the way uh, perhaps because a beer style could be slightly demanding, like an IPA should be demanding to drink, I would say. There, it should be assertive. But we, 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 we take pride in making sure that it should always be quite clear what kind of beer style you're drinking. And the, the last thing, our core value number four, is drinkability. Lots of breweries make, uh, make beers which are um, aggressive, uh, and that's okay, but some of these beers seem maybe to be tailor-made for, for, for beer raters. So uh, when they uh, drink a little bit, then whoa, more alcohol, more bitterness, more hoppiness, more dark, you know, all these extreme things would, would be appreciated very highly. But we think that a beer like that is typically very often hard to drink, at least if you have a pint or if you drink the whole bottle alone. We think that uh, our beers should be comfortable to drink. They should be interesting and there should be, should be lots of, of stuff in there which you can enjoy if you're looking for extra flavors, but it should still be comfortable. So when you come to the end of a Nögne bottle, we hope that you would be, still feel that it's enjoyable to drink, and ideally that you would like to have one more.